Technology has evolved so much that your smartphone is capable of doing a lot of things that only a general purpose computer could do in the past. This is possible because of the use of and improvements in SOCs, also known as system on a chip. But what even are these things? Well, my name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm gonna explain what are SOCs. So let's get started. SOC stands for System on a Chip and it is an integrated circuit that combines components of various electronic systems to achieve a common goal. An SOC can be comparable to a general purpose computer because it can have many or even all the components that a general purpose computer has. It's just much smaller. The SOC can consist of one or more CPU cores, graphical processing unit, memory including ROM, RAM, EPROM, or flash memory, storage, various peripherals such as USB, Ethernet, timers, SBI, I2C, UART, etc., analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters, voltage regulators, and even FPGAs. At this point, you might ask, why isn't my whole computer just a tiny chip then? Why? Well, since the components in SOC are extremely small, they aren't as powerful as the components in a general purpose computer. For example, the CPU in the general purpose computer has significantly better processing time. Hence, it can be faster compared to a CPU in the SOC chip. The downside to the general purpose computer CPU is that it consumes significantly more power and produces more heat than an SOC. This makes SOC great for phones, routers, digital cameras, and many other devices. Otherwise, your phone's battery would be dead in a couple minutes and you might get burnt. Also, SOCs have lower manufacturing costs because various electronic components are placed into one chip, one tiny chip. Some SOCs can have reprogrammable hardware if the chip has an FPGA integrated into it. This can really give an advantage to an SOC that does not have this component. For example, you created a hardware design for your embedded system that is SOC based. A year later, you figure out a way to reduce the size of the existing hardware design on the FPGA. This will result in a significant drop in power consumption. In this case, you can go ahead and ask the customers to upload the new hardware design or you can do it yourself for them. This will equal to lower power consumption on the customer side due to higher efficiency of the system. An example of a chip like this is Xilinx Sync 7000 series SOC, which combines an ARB CPU and an FPGA. Sync SOC chips are used in industry for multi-axis motor control, multi-function printers, medical endoscopes, and many more. In addition, the Zinc SOC is used as well on various development boards, such as Real Digital's Blackboard and Digilent's Zybo Z7. Downside to SOCs is that if an electronic component in it breaks, there is no way to replace it. For example, if the RAM memory burns out on the SOC, you can't switch that out like you would be able to do on a general purpose computer. You would have to replace the whole chip which is rather hard to do yourself as the chip has many tiny pins and soldering those will be a challenge. Maybe a couple years down the road, we might have general purpose computers that are simply SOCs. What are your experiences on SOCs? I would love to know your thoughts on this. Leave your answer in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more videos from Simply Embedded as I'll be doing step-by-step -step tutorials on how to program Xilinx Sync SOCs. If you haven't done this yet, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you want to see another video from Simply Embedded, click on the screen right now. Seriously, click on the screen. You, you actually might learn something new. Dude, you're a smart person. You should check out this video. Seriously, it can be pretty cool.